Right then, you unruly fucking bunch. I'm coming for you, right? This one needs to be a freebie because I have concerns, right? Consumer law, right? I might burst some bubbles here, but I'm not sorry because I'm here to protect you and your business. Consumer law, it 100% applies to us if we are taking money for goods and services, full stop. It is really clear from loads of threads that I've seen in like baker groups that some of us don't know about it, uh, don't fully understand it, or think that it doesn't apply to us for some reason. Not knowing about consumer law, that can't be a legal defence. It's our responsibility to know the laws and legislation that apply to our business. But stay with me because it's actually, it's not too much, it's not too complicated to learn, right? So this is just a case of setting out the facts and giving you a bit of clarity for them. Um, while compiling my notes for this, which has took me ages, I've gone right through like official government websites, Citizens Advice, the Witch website. My main concern that I've got is that the law is actually really clear. It's not that complicated and it is fully accessible to us online. But a lot of it is in contradiction to widely held beliefs that seem to be on a lot of the Facebook cake communities. Like you can't keep 100% payments in all cases just because you've said so in your terms and conditions. You can't say, well, I've never had a complaint before, so I'm going to assume you're a scammer. You can't say it's not my problem once I've left my hands without making sure that that cake's going to travel well and, you know, without advising them how to store it properly, for example. So it's never going to be my intention to discredit anybody. I don't want to come across like I'm personally challenging anyone in particular because no one knows the root of this misinformation, but there are multiple sources of it. Um, to prove what I'm saying, I'm going to give you links to official sources so you can find out about these laws for yourself in take, instead of taking the word of somebody on Facebook or on YouTube, including myself. You know, I'd like to think I've built up a bit of trust with you all by now, but I could be spouting bollocks. You don't know. So it's on you to learn, but I'm going to try and make it easy for you by pointing you in the proper direction and trying to translate some of like the legalese. So as always, I need to state, I am not a legal expert. This does not constitute legal advice from me. That is why I'm posting the official links. So it's a bit of a nerve wracking one for me because I know I'm going to ruffle a few feathers of quite noisy birds, right? But I won't be doing my job properly if I didn't present the facts to you to dispel the misinformation that could land you in trouble if you believe it. So this is your business. It's your responsibility. If you end up in small claims court or report to trading standards or environmental health, you can't use the defence of, well, I asked in a Facebook group and 20 people told me I could do it this way. So I'm not going to mess about. I'm going to post the link to the actual document of this Consumer Rights Act. And then I'm going to translate it into our terms that apply to our businesses. Don't panic when you come up against some things in there because there are notes for exemptions um, when products are bespoke and perishable, which most of ours are. So straight into what it means then. Um, the Consumer Rights Act 2015. The first link I'm going to attach to this will be the page regarding goods rather than services or digital content because we supply goods. The first thing to know is that a contract doesn't have to be written down, right? There are statutory rights that are agreed to on both sides as soon as the customer makes a payment. Whether or not you've got a written contract or a terms and conditions document is irrelevant at this point because consumer rights always apply. In written contracts, you can't use any terms and conditions that would be considered unfair under the law, right? So the law states, goods should be of satisfactory quality, fit for their particular purpose and as described. We don't get to decide what that means, right? A client is well within their rights to disagree with us. If any single one of those terms is not fulfilled, then we are in breach of the sales contract. We've got a legal duty to put it right. If we breach that contract, the customer's side doesn't need to be fulfilled either, meaning they don't have to pay us. So all of this boils down to just do your fucking job properly, right? So number one, to explain those points, goods should be of satisfactory quality. What does this mean? Your bake should be good. It should be fresh. Your finish should be good. You can't deliver it damaged in transit. If you're charging a premium price, it needs to be a premium product, right? As I've always told you, perfect your products before you put them on sale. It's going to save you a lot of risk. 
Don't let your mistakes leave the kitchen. If you know that cake's sunk, you know it ain't right. If the quality is not satisfactory, you are in breach of contract. So the second point about goods should be fit for purpose. So they should be edible for a start. Um, if it's a celebration cake, what would they expect? You know, what is the purpose of that? It's to be a centerpiece, so it needs to be centerpiece worthy. You know, that's the point of a celebration cake. It, it comes out with the candles, you know, it's a big part of the day. Also, we know that cakes have to travel, right? So make them fit for travel build them properly package them properly if you know somebody wants to collect a tiered cake and travel 200 miles uphill and down dale um it needs to be able to do that it's your responsibility to either make it able to travel that far because you know it needs to travel that far or turn the order down none of this it's not my problem once it's left my house bullshit right we're the experts it's on us to make sure that it's capable of doing that or to say no so the third point, goods should be as described. So if you're saying something's homemade, it's got to be homemade. If they've had a sample from you, you've got to use that same recipe in what they order. It should also be the right flavour. It should have correct spellings, or at least spellings that they've sent you. Um, it should be the size that they're expecting. If they've sent you inspiration photos, you need to make it absolutely clear it's not going to look exactly the same. So we're managing their expectations, aren't we? If it's above your skill level, don't say, yes, I can do that, and then try and hand over something that, that's not up to that par. Section 14 talks about the goods matching the model. So in this case, the model would be inspiration photos or our own product photos. The clause is there that it can vary as long as we've been clear that it will vary before they pay. So... We've then got a section that says you're not allowed to add on surprise charges, hidden charges. So if you want to charge a fee for late collection, which would be against my advice, um, it must be made clear to up front that you'll do that. Same if you charge for delivery and the need delivery, you need to tell them the delivery charge before the book. You know, they might expect delivery of a big cake to be included in the price. So make it clear up front so there aren't any hidden charges. We then get into their consumer rights if these terms aren't met by you so if they complain if any of those things apply if they believe that what you've supplied is not satisfactory quality not fit for purpose or not as described they've got a right to complain they've got a right to reject the item they've got a right to a repair or a replacement repair don't just mean damage it's it means like correcting a mistake so making it conform to the contract um or they've got a right to a price reduction meaning a refund that can go up to 100%. So there's statutory terms, whether you've got a written contract or not, if you've breached those terms, they don't have to meet their end of the contract either. So they don't have to pay you anything. So can expect 100% refund if they are deemed to be in the right. If you want the goods returned before you give a refund, you've got to put that in your terms and conditions. We don't always need it back if we know that we've cocked up. Um, any refund that you do give, should be given within 14 days of you agreeing to refund and by the same payment method unless they agree otherwise. So, long story short, you come up against a complaint, you offer a repair or replacement first. If these are not acceptable or possible, if you can't fit them in, like uh, if they wanted the order for a specific occasion that's now passed, uh, then it's up to 100% refund if any of those basic consumer law terms are not met because you haven't held up your end of the contract so they don't have to pay when it comes to perishable products they need to complain before uh, the expiration date of the product so if you said it within 48 hours then any complaint should come back to you within 48 hours so this is our exemption to the standard 30 days to return uh, because we do perishable products if it's something that's clear from a photo like if it's the wrong flavour or a misspelling, you can tell in that case by comparing your messages with what you've given them. So you know if you haven't met contract there, if it's not as described. Even if it's been eaten, I can't find anything that I could see as like industry specific for us regarding cake that still gets eaten even if it's wrong flavour. We've got to bear in mind that birthdays need cake and they haven't got another option for cake once they're at that point of cutting it up and the kids are all sat down with the paper plates. Um, the need cake so be kind say that you're sorry don't be an asshole about it like well you've eaten it so you can't have a refund you've still not met the contract they might be happy with a part refund or a discount of a future order if the cake was enjoyed anyway 
and if you are very apologetic about it. So use your judgment, consider what you've got in your terms and conditions regarding returns. Try to come up with an agreement or a compromise that'll suit you both. If the complaint is that every person at the party struggled to eat this dry cake, but it all got cut up for kids and it got thrown in bin by parents, it's gonna be hard for them to return it. Also, it's gonna have dried out after it's been cut. It doesn't mean that they were lying about it being dry at the time. So you've got a grey area there. So have your clear and fair terms and conditions and just do what's best for your business going forward. Don't assume everybody's trying to scam you, but do protect yourself. Um, if they can't prove the cake were dry and you know that you've baked that cake, that recipe a thousand times with the exactly same brand of ingredients and you're still eating the very moist off cuts that you cut off the top, you're in a better position. But... Like, if they're going to leave a bad review and tell everybody that came to that party who may have been witness to this dry cake that none of the kids ate, if they tell those people you refuse to refund, it could do you more damage. So consider a compromise in return for the goodwill. All of us remember there's a, the very public court of social media where there don't appear to be easily enforceable rules, you know? They can say what they want if they wanted to. Right, if you need to repair or replace, you have to do it quickly and at no cost and no significant inconvenience to the customer. If it's not possible for you to do that, then it's a refund situation. If after the repair or replacement, you've still not given them what was expected, it's a refund situation again. If the cake's collapsed because they've melted it or they've slammed on brakes and you've given it to them solid and you've told them to keep it cool and to drive carefully, you aren't going to repair it. Or refund it if you want to do so you can charge them for repair or replacement because that's their fault it should be easy to tell from photos if it's melted or if it's been hit or tipped or shunted um, but you need to be able to prove in your processes that you always stick that bottom sponge to the board well and that you dowel it and that you didn't hand it over already melting and that you gave them travel and storage instructions so the burden of proof is always on the seller so just make sure that you, you've got notes about how you do everything. If for any reason you are late supplying the cake, if a time's been agreed on, you know, if you're delivering it directly to the party, or if you've said it'll be ready to collect at a certain time and it isn't, again, you're in breach of contract, so the customer can legally cancel that contract. They can reject a later time that you offer and they can expect a, a full refund as well. Um, if you want to check that, it's section 28.6b. And then into section 29 of passing of risk with deliveries, right? If we've asked or paid anybody else to deliver or if we're posting something, the risk is ours until it gets delivered. So yeah, we've got to refund if as mother-in-law dinks cake, you know, um, or if the brownies that we post get battered, it's our responsibility. However, if the customer sends somebody else paid or otherwise to collect, damage during transit is then at their risk but obviously we've still got to assemble and package adequately and give transport instructions to whoever's been sent that's our responsibility if it's clear from photographs that the product doesn't meet your end of the contract you don't need to insist on a return before you refund also you've you have to cover reasonable cost of return in the case of a faulty item um, so if they've driven 30 miles to collect something and it's not as described, you can't expect them to drive all the way back at their cost. If you can see the evidence in your inbox, if you know you're fucked up, don't fuck up further by insisting that they drive all the way back to you with it. It's not like you can resell a food item anyway. So returns, the generally so a retailer can inspect the item so that they know that it is faulty before the refund. In cases of complaints about dryness or sogginess that can't be proved by the photos, you are within your rights to ask for it back within, say, 48 hours or whatever your advised expiry time is of them receiving it so that you can you can judge and make a decision. So the next step I'm going to go into, the next step I want you to take is to produce yourself a set of fair and legal terms and conditions that the customer will agree to and that will protect you and also uh, make customers happy as well because they'll know what, what they need to do in, to, in the case of a complaint.